What's heavier, kilogram of steel or kilogram of feathers? That's right, it's a kilogram of steel, because steel is heavier than feathers. What do you mean? They're both a kilogram. But steel's heavier than feathers. <laughs> Mass. How heavy something is. What is mass? Mass is a property of matter and all matter has mass. In a sense, uh, it is what makes stuff stuff. Property, okay, but what does it really do? Well, mass has two qualities. First, there is inertial mass, so it means that mass always has inertia associated with it, which means it will always attempt to keep going the exact way it is going at the moment. And we'll talk more about inertia in the future, but it will not be super relevant in this video. Second, mass has gravitational mass, meaning all masses attract each other through gravity, and this is what gives mass weight. We're already getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, so let me be very clear on one thing. Weight is not the same thing as mass. It is an effect caused by mass. By analogy, uh, think of a lamp. A lamp causes an effect called light. But light is not the same thing as the lamp. And the same goes for mass and weight. So let's be more precise. Uh, weight is actually the force between two masses, the gravitational force between two masses. So what we usually call the weight of an object is just the force between the Earth and the object. So if we ever move to Mars, for example, all weights would be different because Mars has a different mass than Earth. So all the weights of objects would be off, but the masses would still be the same. Still, those two things are directly proportional to one another. So to say that mass is how heavy an object is, is not wrong wrong. It's a simplification, sure, so it's inaccurate, but it still holds water. So in, in summary, for our purposes here, mass is a property of matter and it tells us how heavy an object is. Volume, how large something is. What is volume? And uh, no, not the sound thing, but the space thing. Let's start with a very simple form, a cuboid. That's essentially the same thing as a cube, but not all the sides have to have the same length. So it's a more general form. Mathematically, its volume is defined as length times width times height. This will calculate how large the cuboid is, or equivalently, how much space there is inside it. For example, how much air is in an empty room or how much water is in a pool. And I don't really want to spend too much time on this because chances are you already understand how the three dimensions work and what a room is. And um, if you understand what a room is, you understand what volume is. So again, simplifying and summarizing. Volume is a measure for three-dimensional space. How large something is. Density. Cramming mass into volume. Now, one key insight about mass or weight is that it depends on how much of something you have. I only want to look at the size of this, this chain. No, they're the same no, way. It's a kilogram. When you say that steel is heavier than feathers, you're technically not talking about weight because the question, how heavy is steel, strictly speaking, makes no sense. But steel's heavier than feathers. Just like uh, how long is a rope? It depends. The more rope you have, the longer it is. And in the same vein, the more steel you have, the heavier it is. But steel is heavier than feathers can make sense if you are talking about some sort of specific weight. So if you take objects of the same size made of different materials, then their weights will be different. And in this sense, steel is heavier than feathers does carry meaning. And the thing is, we actually use this concept of specific weight and also specific mass. We call it density. 
In the most basic terms, density is packaging. How much mass is concentrated in, in what volume? Literally, how densely packed something is. Different materials like steel or wood or feathers have different densities and these ultimately depend on their atoms that they're, that they're made of. How massive they are and how densely packed they are. Like, for example, these are water molecules in fluid form. These are water molecules in solid form, aka ice. We can see that the regular crystal pattern of ice has large gaps and thus less mass per volume. Thus, the density of ice is lower than the density of water. And uh, that is why ice floats on water, for example. How massive an atom is depends on how many protons and neutrons it has. So it's the same basic principle again, more mass per volume. Summary and conclusion. Note that we have discussed um, mass density, which is the most common density, but there are others too. You could look at how many people live in a given area, it's the population density, or you could look at the density of traffic or even of restaurants or whatever. It's a universal concept really. Also, um, we can define density not just with regard to volume, but also to area or length. For example, as humans are essentially bound to the surface of the Earth, we usually express population density in people per area, not per volume. To sum up, mass is stuff, volume is space, density, how much stuff you cram into space. Okay, smallest mic drop in history. What? I don't get it.